Okay. Okay. Let's start this. Welcome back to the stream. We're gonna continue working on the game. And today we're gonna work on weapons. And probably some more things at the end if um, if there's enough time. But yeah, we're gonna start working on the weapons today. So actually we're, we're gonna do a small refactoring at first um, for something that we've done uh, last stream. And after that, we're gonna start working on the on the weapons. But first, let's see, let's see how the game looks. Well, what have we done since, uh, or yeah, what do, what do we have done uh, in the game right now? So we still have to manually start the level from the inspector. I haven't made a way of starting a level automatically when you play the game, but that works. And those enemies are so fast. I should make them slower. But anyway, you have enemies, they reach the top and they then damage the tower. That's amazing. After that, you have the cooldown. Uh, so this is the cooldown between waves. After which, a new wave is gonna begin. Like so. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's kind of it. <clears throat> so yeah, as I said, now we're gonna start working on the on the weapons. So because right now the enemies are damaging the tower, but we don't have any way of defending the tower. So we were gonna uh, start working on that. But first we have to do we have to do a change. So last time um, we've worked some more on the on the enemies. And what we've done was uh, we've changed the uh, so so pre actually no previously we had a for for we had a health component um, a, a, or more like a common health component that we used for both the tower um, this one so we we used it both for the tower and for the enemies but uh, last time we decided to. To change this because we need so we needed something specific for the for the enemies, so we had to make uh, uh, yeah a, a specific component uh, for for uh, for the enemies for the for the uh, enemies health. And uh, what's left to do is um, transform uh, this uh, common component that we've left off in here and make it uh, work directly with the tower. Because right now it doesn't. It's it's just uh, yeah. It's still the common component, but we no longer need it. We we can make it specialized for the tower and we can uh, actually remove some code from it. So that's what we're gonna start with. And after that, we're gonna start working on the on the weapons and some yeah yeah things about the weapons. So yeah, so we're gonna start uh, real quick with this. It shouldn't take long because it should be just some uh, renaming stuff and just deleting some code. But uh, yeah, should uh, should uh, uh, should come out real quick. Okay, so let's let's get play mode and let's get into the code. Uh, uh, this is not where we want to be. We want to go to. So this is the health component. And as I said, we want to uh, modify it and make it uh, specific to the tower, which is not that hard. So let's close the enemies folder and the tower. So we have the tower. And yeah, we're gonna put it. We're gonna put this uh, this component directly into the tower fold. So yeah, I'm just gonna copy it for now, like so. That shouldn't have changed anything in the project. So come on, you need to compile the code. But, ah, I forgot to click in the editor. It was stuck. Okay, so let's see. 
so this is the health component still here knows where it is so so that's cool and now we have to do some changes so actually the only thing that we have to change for this is we we needed a way of uh, so 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 you can apply uh, multipliers to specific on on the tower or on the enemies and because the health component was a was a, yeah it, it was a shared component between between those two we have a way of uh, yeah we have to make a way component to get the multiplier uh, from the correct source because uh, for the um, for the tower we had to take the the, the multipliers from uh, let's see uh, from this assets manager that we have in here this is the place where uh, we have defined all the upgrades available in the game for example here we have a, an upgrade for the tower health that you will be able to yeah you'll be able to level up and stuff and yeah and for the enemies uh, we had to take the the multiplier from somewhere else so we have made the system here is um, or here are the components for it. so we had a, a field in the in the editor which was um, which was a an, basically the type was an interface and we used the the new attribute from from unity the serialized reference and we made so so this is the interface is just uh, an interface and it has a, a method in it and we have two implementations for this uh, for this interface one it's this one is for the for the tower and this one is for the enemies so whatever you use the component you would either choose to to use this class or this one so let's let's visualize that so so here this is the property that we made and here i chose because this is the tower i chose to use the upgrades manager proxy which uh, makes it so it it gets the the multiplier for this for this stat from the upgrades manager and enemies was the other way around we we use this other, the other proxy now because we've made a specialized component for the for the enemies, for the enemy's health uh, we no longer have the system we can uh, uh, change it so we so we always get the the multiplayer stat from the upgrades manager so that's what what we're gonna do right now so instead of having this whole uh, method in here or yeah copy this upgrades manager because this is this is what what we want uh, in here we're gonna paste it like so And yeah, so now we have a field for, for the upgrades manager in here, which I'm not, I'm not sure I want to keep it in here actually. So let's remove it. So I, I, I want it to be in another tab. That's what I mean. So hide in play mode, not hide, but disable. In play mode and instead of the general tab I want to want it in the internal tab and now we oh, the only thing that we have to do is here instead of getting the multiplier through the proxy we're gonna to the upgrades manager and get the multiplier for the stats so that's actually that's all we have to do so now the, the proxy is no longer used, so I can safely remove it. And also those uh, classes and the interface are no longer required. So now if we go back, we have the health we have the stat, the, the link for the stat. And we have the, the new tab for the upgrades manager. Let's uh, actually assign this. So we want the upgrades manager in here. Let's save the scene. And now theoretically, um, let's see, um, how should we do this?
Uh, yeah, I think I have to go. No, how how can I do it? Oh yeah, no, I know I know how to do it. Okay, so let's play the game. So we've generated the level. Let's go to Upgrades Manager data and let's add a. So and for this, I want to have the level one. So basically, I've made, added a an entry in the, in the list of upgrades and the and the what they call them the level for for the upgrade. So basically, I said that for this upgrade which is for the tower health, I want to have the level one instead of the level zero, which would give me a multiplier of one. So now, well, actually it doesn't really work that way. No, does it? Because I somehow have to update the health. And right now, we have a way of upgrading the health, uh, or not upgrading, but, but, but changing the health when the, hmm. Yeah, that's something that we'll have to do, because I don't think we've done that. Because right now, I mean, I can do it. Hmm. No, I know how to do it. We'll have to, to save the game. So I have the save. So I should be able to just save the game. And if we look in this humongous JSON, we should see this is a tower data that's not what we upgrades level. So here. Yeah, so upgrades manager data. This is the serialized data for this. And we have this is the GUID, this is the ID of the upgrade, and it has a level of one. So now if we play the game again, uh, we should get, yeah, we do have the, the health increased. Something that that doesn't work, and I don't know why it doesn't. Oh, because we had, we, <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, that, that, that does make sense. So when, when we save the game, we, we saved the, uh, yeah, we, we saved with the, with the life of 100. And now when we when we did the game and loaded the save file, we, we got a, level, uh, a health of, of 100, but the max health was changed because we had the upgrade. So yeah, that, that works. That works correctly. Or it works as the, the code says, but I'm not sure actually that it's correct. We'll have to have to do that later. But anyway, we have that uh, this piece of code worked. So we, we got the, the multi the upgrades manager on on load so now we have the max health change on the top so, so the the change worked now the only thing that i'd like to make is to rename this component so instead of uh instead of it being just health i'm gonna call it tower health and he wants me or not not me but he wants to change a the, the name of this in a lot of places. <clears throat> I'm not gonna rename them. For now, I'm gonna keep it like this. Uh, I'm gonna our health data. I'm gonna rename this as well. And let's rename the this one. I have to rename it manually. Tower health data io yeah so we have the new name for the for the component um serialized tower health data here and in the io <coughs> Okay, and now we have to see because uh, we have some errors apparently, or we don't. Okay, um, but there are places where this is used, and I will I would like to change those. So, yeah, we previously did this, but we can just 
uh, use the tower health as, as right here. Let's get this, uh, yeah, like so. Let's see here. Let's remove this whole thing from. Yeah, like so, and this one as well. Let's refresh this. Yeah, all the references are okay now. So we should be good. Well. So now theoretically we should be able to play the game and uh, it should work. It should work uh, correctly. We have a health of 120 right now. That's why. Oh yeah, I know why. Because we've changed the name of the serialized component, so the the data from the save file was not loaded. But the but the upgrades were were loaded, so it was able to to apply the the, the modifier to the to the base health as well. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I'll have to to take a look at that sometime because it, it doesn't work as uh, as I wanted it to. But for now, for now, it's okay. Okay, so we have we have health. Let's try to start a level and see if it works as expected. Because yeah, see if that the the, the reference to the to the health um, component still works. So for now. No error, which is a good sign. And we've taken damage, which is amazing. Yeah, so so it worked. So we still have uh, references to the to the tower south. So so yeah, that that worked okay. Where are the enemies? Wait, what? I've just passed by them. Yeah. Okay, so th this works fine. So I guess the task the task is done. One last thing, I have to rename this as well. Tower health, yeah, that's better. Yeah, and I'm gonna um, remove the save file because we don't <coughs> we don't actually. Need or yeah let's write this okay so let me code and after that we shall start the the work on the on the weapons but first let's do some review so let's let's look at the code let's see what changed so enemy manager what have we changed here i think the yeah we've we've removed that from the front which is okay. Enemy damage data, same thing. That looks fine. Enemy spawner, the same thing, I guess. Yeah, but in two places. That's tower health. That's tower health. Yeah, that looks fine. Let's see. Oh yeah, I have to change this. And I assume the namespace as well. So we've changed this. So it doesn't work with the multi uh, or the multiplayer, but the proxy. That's correct. We've removed the proxy from here. There are some. Uh... Okay, let's see what what's what's up with those. We don't need those imports. Yeah, that's better. The rest looks fine. Um, in IO, we only changed the serialized. Yeah, this one. So that looks fine. Cool. 
Uh, that's kind of it. Okay, so one last thing. Instead of opponents in here, we should write tower. Because this is the... This is the new um, namespace for this place. So yeah, tower health runtime. Yeah, that's fine. And we have to rename this assembly definition. So yeah, I'm gonna rename it from here actually. Um, no, shift F6. Yeah. Okay, let's recompile the code and see if everything is okay. Yeah, so it's not okay. And the reason is, um, yeah, we have to import this again. So actually, we can just say tower in here and it should be fine. Uh, one. Okay, those was uh, those were all the places. Nice. So now everything should be fine. Let's add uh, two more minutes to the to the task. So now we can um, commit the code and so feature uh, not feature factor we factor. Publish. Awesome. Let's put the task on done. Oh, so now, yeah, as I said, now we're gonna start working on the on the weapons, and yeah, let's see. So here are the tasks that the, the tasks we're gonna do today. Um, I, I'm not sure for the, the last one for sure I'm not going to do today uh, or or at least not on stream because this is more of a research task and the last two if we have time we, we might do them but uh, yeah we'll see but but the weapons for sure we're going to work on them and we're going to start with this so the first component that I want to make is um, yeah I want to make a component that detects the enemies Whenever they're uh, there inside the, yeah, we're there when they're uh, to the weapon. So, yeah, we're gonna use a, it's just basically gonna be a component that uses a, um, what do you call it? A uh, capsule collider. And uh, we're gonna do something with the layer so it only detects the enemies. Okay. If I wrote uh, more about it in here, I'm not. Yeah, I wrote some things. Did I say when it's inside the capsule collider? Yeah. So nothing more that I know about. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna start working on this. Um. Let's. Um, track the time. Hey, Zarnot, how are you? Hey, Adrian, thanks. <laughs> um, Yeah, so let's uh, uh, let's start working on that component. So we uh, we do have uh, yeah. So so we we've made a a way of visualizing the collider that we that we're gonna make today. So let's make that component now. So um. Actually, uh, what did I call that in the task? A detector component. Yeah, we're gonna use the same name. Uh, 
or actually not opponent, just enemy detector. Yeah, like so. Um, okay, so. Um, Actually, I think we have to make a um, uh, a skeleton for the weapon, for the for the weapon entity, and uh, then attach the component to it. So let's do that. Dummy weapon. Dummy weapon. So let's add all the things that it needs to have. So. Uh, we need a root. We need a children block. Uh, let's create the components object and let's add this. So enemy detector. Like so. And actually that's everything. There's nothing else that I that I need to add to this. But actually, let's think about it a bit. So what do we want? Um, oh yeah, so for the enemy detector, actually we, we also want to add that collider visualizer. It doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have a capsule yet. Uh, this I can assign. And we're gonna make that let's see. Um I'm gonna make the collider capsule collider and see it. Uh wait, where's my collider? Ah, I have to expand this so I can see. Yeah, this should be on the Z axis, I think. Let's make the height like so. And now we can assign the collider, and we have the. If we go back here and collapse this. Well, this doesn't look good at all. Why does it look like shit? I think we have to position it at... Why does it look like this? Why not Sphere Collider? Um, just so I have a... So, uh, let me see. so my thinking is... Um, where the hell is my tower? Oh, I'm inside the tower. So my thinking is, I want I want a collider that, so so I, so I want a, a constant radius from the from the enemy to the to the to the weapon. Let's add a let's add an empty. Let's put a sphere collider in here. Yeah, so if I would have a collider, even if it's, I don't know, something like this, depending on where the the enemy would be, um, I'm thinking that, um, yeah, it would have, it'd be, it'd be hard to visualize when the, when the enemy is in the, in the radius of the tower. So my thinking is, instead of having it, um, instead of having it as a as a sphere, I want this collider something like this. So wherever you are around the 
tower even if you're coming right here um, when when you visualize it in the editor so so basically it's, it's more for the editor for the for the game itself it would be easier to visualize when the when the enemy entered the the, the zone in which the the weapon is active that's the, that's the reasoning because otherwise if you don't have this um depending on where the enemy is so if he, so if he's coming through here this would be the place where where it would it would enter but if he's coming way up higher this is the place where you would uh, it would uh, be detected by the weapon so it would be uh, difficult to visualize it in the in the editor so yeah i just see okay we're just gonna now uh, we're gonna make it look like a cylinder but actually we're gonna use uh, capsules because they they're easier to to compute for the physics uh, system. Okay. Um. But still, why is this not working? Why is this not working? So let's get my dummy weapon out of here. Oh, uh, I know why it's working. Uh, why it's not working? I think the lighter might be too small, so I need to increase. Yeah, I had to increase the radius. Okay. I don't like this. Um, let's change something. I want more more lights for this. Um, I'm gonna go crazy, but I want the want to increase that so we have a smoother spell, yeah, like so. So now we, when we get the tower, yeah, like so. I'm gonna make those transparent, I think. Their way to. Yeah, but anyway. So this is uh, the, the, the component we're gonna use to visualize stuff. And now we're going to work on this uh, detection component. Let's actually do some more cleanup. I want to remove that monoscript from there. Because it's ugly. And also for the enemy detector. Remove it as well. And I think I want to make this a an entity component. Which means that I would want a data, a data component. Data. Uh, okay. let's add this oh no let's uh, we're gonna keep it like this for, for a bit uh let's add a uh add the difference to the collider okay and Like so, we can make this an inscription body. Let's add those two in, in tabs. Tab group, tabs. 
base group tabs general tab and I'll add this in the internal tab. So now when you change this here, the collider changes as well. So that's nice. We don't have the uh, we don't have to go to the collider to to change this, and everything works as expected. When that radius changes, and the last thing we have to tell the enemy detector that it has a data component. So now we can use it in here. Actually, we don't really need to use it in here, but... So what? Do, actually, what do we want to do here? So I think... Um, what's, what's that function called? On trigger enter, I guess that's what what I want. Because I'm I'm actually kind of collider, actually not be a collider, but but uh, the trigger. Let's just log something in here. Uh, other that team. And let's make this. Uh, Uh, let's make this a trigger. Uh, the height it has a height of ten. Let's make this a height of twenty, and let's move him by. Actually, I don't know by how much I want to move it. Theoretically, it's ten, but actually, it's not. It would be something like fifteen. No, uh, five. My bad. Yeah, something like this, maybe. It depends on the on the on the radius of the tower, but. We're gonna keep it like this for now. Let's collapse this. So now what I want to do is... Let's get an object in here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna... I have to put a rigid body on this, right? Uh, I don't want gravity. No gravity. Get me back my. Actually, let's put this to zero, like so. I really hate this in Unity, those magical methods for, for triggers and colliders. I really hate them. Because I never know when or how they work. So now I'm thinking, do I have to add a rigid body to this? Let's put this on pause so my weapon doesn't fall. So will it now work if I get this sphere back inside. No, still don't get the message. So what do I have to do to get messages from, from this capsule collider? I have no idea. No clue. I mean, it's a trigger, it should work. I did this. I have the bugs messages.
Hmm. Why the hell doesn't this work? The collider is a a child of this component that listens for this. And it's also a child of the rigid body. We're on the same layer. I mean, I haven't changed anything in here, but uh, default should interact with default. Where is it here? Default interacts with default, so so we're okay. We're okay with this. So what the hell? What the hell? Why the why doesn't it work? The fuck? Oh. Let's try with stay. There's something that I that I'm missing here. I don't think so. Let's make that I should create that sphere in the inside that rigid body. Ah no 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 stop stop stop. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. We need to have the, but that that makes even less sense. Uh, let's copy this component. Let's add it in here. Um, base component is new, and now it works. What the hell? Why? Why does it work like this? And this assign it, and I need here as well. Move this. Let's create that sphere so we we have it in here. And now you tell me that if I go with this sphere in here, no, it still doesn't work. But if this here does have a rigid body and it's not moving, please. Now it's gonna detect it. Yes. Okay. Doesn't make any sense, but sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this. Okay, let's make a new layer for the enemies. Enemy. Let's make this sphere an enemy. And let's make sure that those two layers are uh, interact with each other. Yeah, all is good. Enemy interacts with default. So now what I have to what I have to do actually let's close everything in here. I think I'm gonna need a a layer mask. I mean, actually, I mean I could use a layer mask for this, but today's Ah, god damn it.
Yeah. So let's see how can we do this. How can I, how can I check if a layer is in a layer mask? Ah, let's first get that. So it would be something like, I don't know if this is the operator that I want. What, what's the operator for uh, um, bitwise and C sharp? I don't want shift because shift I want. I want the end. Oh, actually, I want or. Actually, I, want or, I think I, I want or. So I have enemy layer. Um, I don't care. Here. Something like this. Uh, I think I need some parentheses in here. I think something like this. So I'm shifting by the by the layer. I say or in here. Yeah, let's see how this works. Uh, let's put an if in here. Okay, let's put, uh, let's make it look prettier. Return in here and like so, let's remove the stay because we don't, know, don't need it anymore. And let's make another sphere. So we have one with the correct layer and one without. So this, I'm going to put it on diff. Let's rename this. And let's, um, this is enemy. Let's try it. Uh, my God damn it. Like so. Okay, so if I get this in the collider, nothing happens. But if I get the enemy in the collider, hell yeah. This doesn't do anything. But the enemy triggers this. Nice, 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 nice. This has to be well here. It's not if it's not an enemy return, otherwise print name. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so now all we have to do is keep track of all the enemies. So I'm gonna put that in the data component.
Uh, I guess we're gonna just keep the game object. I don't, I don't have anything better to to store, <clears throat> at least for now. Actually, I want this. I want this to be read only. Just to be sure that it's empty, let's um, the but let's clear it in here. And whenever the enemy enters this, we're gonna add it to the list. Other, by the way, other game object. Let's cache this. Like so. And I'll also want a public event action. Hmm, do I want I wanna know when an enemy enters the zone or do I want to know when the, the list uh, has changed. Actually, I don't think I need to know this. Or do I? Oh, actually, I don't think I need the event because I can make the weapons look at that list and. Uh, Yeah, I can make the components or the or the weapons look at the at the list and look at the list uh, every frame. Doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it like this for now. Let's make it look a little bit prettier. Let's put a space in here. Um, please draw settings. Go paging false. Expand it true. Is there anything else to add? Uh, I don't think so. Should count. Yeah. Bam. Nice. So whenever the enemy is in range, we'll have it stored in this, in this list. And when he goes out, he gets removed. Yeah, so this is actually everything that, that I want from this component. Um, but I want to tweak the this uh, visualizer component a bit. I want to make some things more transparent. So first, let's see. Um, Uh, 
I saw a function that I really liked in the stream. With alpha. <laughs> this uh, color color dot alpha. Uh, alpha. Red, green, uh, this is blue. Like so. Uh, we can make this an expression body. So now, let's see. Right now I'm setting color way, way, way up here. But I want to change that. So actually, I cache the. Actually, let's put both of them here. Uh, transparent color is color with alpha. Let's do something like this. Let's see how this looks. So we should get the, this uh, in a ring. Um, I don't. Uh, it looks the same. Does it not take into consideration alpha? Is that it? Be so sad. Damn, that sucks. Really? So if you if I put it back to one, it looks the same. That's so sad. Why? But this works. Okay, no. So I'm doing something uh, something stupid. I don't know what. What am I doing wrong? Red, green, blue, and the alpha. The constructor, I'm not crazy. Yeah. So what's wrong? Uh, let's put a breakpoint in here. Because this should work. Enable for this session. Compile. What are you doing? Are you stuck? Are you stuck? Let's put a space in here. Let's. What the hell is? What the hell is he doing? <sighs> yeah. Welcome to Unity. Where everything fucking sucks. I mean, play mode. I'm an idiot. Of course, it doesn't. That's why I don't see the changes in code because I'm in play mode. Okay, okay, I'm the idiot. Not unique. Yeah. 
yeah, this works. I'm stupid. What's with this? What? Okay, that was an it was a weird error. But yeah, this is better. Okay. Let's just uh, try this again, so. Yep. Nice. Okay, so this component is done. Ninety minutes. Yeah, Dog Manager. Oh, yeah, yeah, the because I've added that uh, that new the new layer. Actually, I want to do one last change. So, um, let's see. here. I want to change the la this layer for our enemy to be enemy. We have a rigid body on this. We do not. So we're gonna add one. It's kinematic, no gravity. Spinning so this crit should be fine, but I'm gonna interpolate. Actually, let's test that this still works. Um, let's play the game. Let's move this a bit up. And let's... Actually, let's leave those there. Let's try to play the level and see if that works. First, let's get a uh, properties for this. So we can see the enemies when I start the the level. There you go. We got the two spheres in there. Okay, so it works. That's all I wanted to know. Let's save this and let's um, let's commit this. Awesome. Okay, so next in line, there are a couple of things. So we can start working on a lot of things, actually. I think this needs to have a dependency on this. Or? No. No, it's okay. Yeah, so now we can start on... So, so we have three types of weapons in the game. 
uh, or yeah, types of attacks. One is projectile attack, one is laser attack, I guess, and uh, one is AOE. And yeah, we can start with whatever. Uh, we have to do all of them anyway, but might start with the laser one because I know uh, I know exactly what I want to do for that one because I've done it for the prototype. Um, okay. Yeah, we're gonna start with the laser. That's weird. Let me refresh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, actually I'm gonna take a short break, and then uh, when I come back, we're gonna start working on this. So yeah, uh, see you in a couple of minutes.
Okay, back. Okay, so let's start with this laser attack again. Let me track the time. Let's see. We're gonna start by making the component for it. I mean, that's that's the whole thing that we're gonna do. But... The weapons. Um... How am I gonna structure this? Because the enemy detector, I think I'm gonna move into a separate folder. I think I'm gonna make a, uh, a, a folder for text. And let's just call it laser. And we have to make the runtime folder. And here we can make our class. So laser attack let's clean up this ESS weapons attacks laser runtime awesome oh uh, no like so And let's make that um, yeah. Let's close some things here because they're open and they shouldn't be because we don't need them. Uh, like so. Even this. Let's make the reference for the assembly A runtime, please. Come on. Awesome. Okay. Um Uh, I'm thinking if there's, so, so we'll have to do, or we'll have to save some, some things about the weapons in the save file. And I wonder what should we save? So obviously we have to save the level of the weapon. Uh, and I think the level is going to stay on another component altogether. So... The laser attack is, mm, or for the laser attack, we're not gonna save anything, because okay, it's gonna have damage or something. Like, uh, yeah, we're gonna have damage, but um, the multiplier for the base damage, yeah, we're gonna calculate it somehow um, based on the level. But the level is gonna be stored in another component, so yeah, I don't think we're gonna save anything in here. Or uh, not store anything in the in the safe, so we don't have to do any serialization or or anything. But we have to do this, so our component knows about the data. And let's see, what do we need to know? We first, yeah, we need to know something like like damage. So public float damage damage. Let's put a zero in here. Let's see. No, no, that's not what I wanted. Tab group base group tabs. Uh, let's put this in general. 
suffix label. Um, per second. Okay. Let's set this component as it is so far, so. Laser attack data. Okay. Let's make a, a thing here. Um, laser attack, laser attack. Awesome. I wonder if I want this the outside or if I uh, actually no, no, I'm going to keep it like that. So HP per second, that's the damage. We will need a reference to to the enemy detector. Yeah, enemy detector. Actually, let's copy this. But we're gonna put it in the, in the internal tab. Okay, let's assign this. And for now, actually, this is guess everything that I need. I don't think there's anything else that I need for this. So. I don't, but I kind of do. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to do things on update. But for that to work, we have to make it. Um, we have to add a new component to the weapon. Entity update manager. Let's put it here. Entity update manager. So this component uh, is responsible for calling the update events on 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 the components that have uh, those interfaces uh, implemented. So instead of relying on Unity doing this, I'm doing it myself. Uh, and yeah, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because uh, this component is hooked to the lifecycle service, so if the game is paused, the uh, the update uh, the update methods are not going to be called on on the components that are uh, that that are registered to this. So uh, yeah, just by just by using this component, uh, um, our entities will uh, will just stop doing stuff if the game is paused by default. Okay, let's see. Oh, damn, I like this. I haven't listened to, to Skillet in a while. Okay, so what do we want to do? Um, so, so in the game, we'll have... Uh, We'll have some settings for the weapons for uh, which uh, enemy target, either the strong one in the uh, yeah the strongest one or the 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 one with health or the the closest to the weapon. Uh, but uh, I guess for now I'm just gonna uh, attack the closest one. And uh, we're gonna do that. Those two, those uh, other methods uh, later. Okay. So, yeah, we will need the closest enemy, the weapon, and yeah, we're gonna do that in here actually. So instead of uh, let's remove this. Instead of um. 
having the 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 laser attack component look at the list of of um, enemies and decide uh, which one is the closest uh, i'm going to have a method in the enemy detector going to give me the closest one um and yeah yeah uh public I guess I'm just going to return game object. Um, closest enemy. Yeah. Now that I think about it, I think I can cache this. Because I know when I when I'm modifying the the, the list, I could cache this. So, a uh, private void, um, oh, I don't know why I've done that, like so, uh, this would have to be int max value. Action int float max value. Um, so that's the distance. Uh, enemy is gonna it's gonna be null. Uh, this will be a game object. And I think I'm gonna save it in the in in the component here. So public game object closest enemy we're gonna do a bunch of the things that we've done here uh, no list, no space but it's gonna be in the internal tab and it's gonna be read only this is gonna return that so d dot closest enemy and in here, we'll have, we'll have to loop um, over all the enemies. Game object. No, I just put this go. Um, Uh, position not limited. the position of the root and actually I want uh, I can go with square magnitude. So I want to root position or if this is smaller than min dist, min dist equals this and enemy equals go. Um, and after all of that, the dot closest enemy, closest enemy is closest enemy, like so. So now what I can do uh, is call this method after. Yeah, like so. After adding uh, any adding an enemy or removing it from the list, so now by having this, if you go back to the laser attack, enemy detector closest enemy, and we can check if this is null. We're gonna just return because we, we don't care about it.
Actually, this might be expensive. I mean, uh, not not, but the the null check. I mean, it is it is expensive. So I might do another. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do something like this. So um, and it's in range count more than zero. Uh, and does a return game object? It returns a bool. If it has, uh, if it doesn't have any enemies, uh, it's gonna return. Otherwise, we're gonna get closest enemy. And here's the part where I need something from the enemy, and I want if I should save that in the enemy detector. Though it doesn't really make sense to to do it like like this. So I, I want the the health component. I think I'm just gonna. I mean, for now, but I'll most probably have. To, uh, I would have to change this uh, later. But for now, I think I'm gonna just um, just get a component here. So closest enemy get component. Uh, actually, hmm. the component in children. And I want the enemy health. Take damage and I have to damage this. And I'm gonna do d dot damage times time dot delta. Okay. Oh, I know how how I can do this. Uh, look, uh, I guess prettier. I can do something similar uh, to to what um, Unity does. Let's 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 try it. And do a public bool and try get closest enemy. Out game object uh, enemy. So if has enemies, um, enemy is um, the, the closest enemy. We're gonna return true, otherwise. Enemy is null, and we're gonna do false. Let's see how this would work. So, can I do out of our enemy? So, I know it would play. Like this. Can I do it like this? I wonder. Yes, I can. So try to get the closest enemy. If you, if I if we don't have it, we're gonna return. Otherwise, we're gonna have it in this variable.
Okay, so we don't need this anymore. Okay. Let's try this. Do we need to stop anything else in here? Uh, no, nope, looks fine. Let's save the scene and let's play this. Ah. Uh, let's try another tower. I don't want to move this. Really? You're going to give me the, the same piece? Ah, god damn it. Uh, let's. Oh, no, let, let's just move this. So. Actually, let's add that special component, uh, which I don't remember the name of. What was that called? Tower aligned component. That's the one. Tower aligned component. Uh, we don't have a module root though. But we do have this. Let's just save this. Let's. Um, use this module here so now we, we can put this wherever like so nice Okay, so now we can start the level. Let's put this has this touched the component already? No. Okay, so we have those two enemies with one hundred health. Let's watch one of them and see what happens when it enters this uh, this area. It just gonna throw errors. Yeah, that's amazing. Because it doesn't find the enemy health. Yeah, that's actually that's uh, understandable. So let's put a breakpoint in here. Let's unpause and let's see what the closest enemy is. Yeah, so it's the sphere. So we yeah, cause because we got the yeah, it does make sense. Um, in the enemy detector instead of um. Where is it? Here. Instead of getting the game object, we should be getting the um, uh, what is it called the rigid body. So this tells me to use the. Oh, he wants me to to get the the, the rigid body component. That's. I want this. Because the rigid body is, is on the root, so so with this we're gonna gonna work just fine. Uh, let me remove that breakpoint and play this. So now it should work fine. Ah, I hate this. Um. Where's the weapon? Ah, because I have this, I can't modify that. Awesome. Let's change the angle a bit. Let's put it like up here. Why do I have errors? Oh, because I've I've touched that enemy, which doesn't have. Yeah, that that's I have to remove those. Uh, those test components. Okay, let's put let's put it here, and let's start the level. Uh, level manager. I want this level invoke. Let's pause this. Okay.
Okay, so we have this enemy, it has 100 health. Let's clear the console, and when he enters that, there we go. He took damage. So while he was inside this, this area, he took damage. And he took exactly, I mean, yeah, exactly. He took uh, 10 damage per second. So apparently it stayed less than a second inside this. But that worked. Let's make a, um, let's see, what can we do? What can we do? Let's take his most of this. Um, and actually we're gonna use handles. Uh, um, Z test. Was this less less equal or greater? Uh, I think it was greater or equal. Um, what is that visualizer component? No, it was less equal. Okay. Uh, let's put red. Why not? Line thickness, let's put it on two. What? I can't, I can't set thickness, okay. Oh, I think I can set it on the line itself. Um, actually, no, let's do it like this. So if D dot enemy detector dot, um, Try get closest enemy out of our closest enemy. So if this happens, we're gonna get those things. Draw a line from root dot transform that position to closest enemy dot transform that position and here i can specify the thickness of the line right yeah so let's put it at two pixels okay we shouldn't get any errors in the editor where when we're not in play mode because we are checking if we have data or not. So let's select the enemy or the weapon. Okay, we don't have any errors. Okay, so we've done that. And one other thing that I wanna do is, um, let's see. I wanna make this as, uh, uh, I wanna make this a prefab. So let's make a folder and add it there. Weapons, dummy weapon. We're gonna remove it from here. We're gonna remove those two as well. And we're gonna add it to a module. So right now we have, we have something here, but we're not gonna use it. Wait, where is this? Okay, so this visual component has the has the thing here. Oh, but we but I can't add. Ah, god damn it! I can't yet add an entity here and expect it to work. Someone has to load it. Hmm. 
let me think about it a bit about this. Um, yeah, I think I know what I, what I have to do. Uh, let me look a bit. Uh, this might sound a bit weird. I have to look at the enemy spawner. Come on. What am I doing here? I'm just getting all the loadables from the enemy and just load I'm loading them. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do a help function on the entity root. Editor, yeah, I guess it's for the editor. I mean, no, it is for the editor. Private bool, uh, not bool, private uh, void. Um, and I'm gonna copy this line. Instead of enemy in here, I'm gonna say uh, game object and what do you mean it has two parameters oh you don't have that okay Uh, this is not a validation function. Okay. Let's remove this. Let's add the weapon. Let's just put it up here. Let's make it a bit bigger. Like so. Yeah. Looks fine. Now we have this. Oh, I would like to have it uh, not available in edit actually. True. Turn application that is playing. I don't want to be able to, to press it in the or what I mean uh, while I'm not in the in, in play mode. Awesome. Now let's save this. Let's go back and let's play the game. Do we have any straight pieces? Yes. We okay, so now I can just look for the no, um, dummy weapon. I'm get them. I'm gonna load the entity. So now they're loaded. Awesome. And now all I have to do is spawn or start the level. Yeah. Uh, let's pause when they're in view. Let's get one of them. Um, yeah, and let's watch this one. Let's see what it uh, what happens to it. There we go. We had that uh, debug line. And yeah, it took damage while going through the through the weapons. Awesome. We have our first weapon. Kind of. 
we, st we still have to do some manual steps for it to work, but uh, after that, it's it's working as as expected. Nice. I think this is it for for this task. I think this is it. Um, yeah. I'm gonna make some more tasks actually, if, um, but that's gonna be for maybe next week. So. Okay, so we've completed this one. We're gonna commit it in a in a second. But first, let's let's do some more tasks. So uh, I want um, let's put it in the backlog. Uh, I'm not gonna estimate. I don't care right now. Okay, so make the enemy die. Um, what else? Oh yeah. Add. Um, well, wait. Uh, Okay. I'm gonna put this in the backlog as well. And actually that's only those two are uh, are needed. Okay, let's um yeah let's let's put this here let's commit this. Okay. I think um so I, so yeah, initially I was thinking of making uh the attacks first and then doing doing the rest of the stuff. But I think I'm going to just use this one attack for now. And continue with the with the with the others uh, other ones uh, later. Um, so we need to make some, yeah, we need to make uh, to add some more things to the weapons. And uh, the most important thing is this. So, or actually no, the the weapon slot. So this is gonna be what uh, what the weapon slot is is a place on the on the tower where you can click and create. A weapon basically and um, I'd like to have that uh, as soon as possible so that we can um, uh, use the weapons without having to manually load the entities you know press the, what I've just added pressing that uh, um, 
without having to go to the to the root and loading the entity. So that's uh, yeah, that's not uh, that's not very cool. I wanted to just work when the tower is built. But for doing this, we have to have the weapon slot manager, and we actually kind of also need. Or actually, we don't need the weapon definition yet, or do we? Yeah, I think I'm gonna just make this and then do the weapon slot manager and then do this. Okay, so let's let's look a bit at, at what those are. So so the weapon definition first. Uh, the weapon definition, as the name implies, is gonna define the weapon. So we're gonna have a name for the weapon, and then it's gonna uh, have a list of um, levels for the weapon. And um, yeah, it's because you will be able to upgrade the the weapons. So you'll need a list of levels. It will have a boolean uh, to to uh, that you can check for. Uh, yeah, you can you can check it, and then uh, the weapon will have infinite levels somehow. And then we're gonna have a list of levels of predefined levels. You will have you can have maybe a custom name for that level. Uh, you will have a currency and the cost in that in that currency. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure we need this. Now that I think about it, because uh, when you when you have the the weapon slot, when you have a weapon slot, you'll be able to click on it, and then you're you're gonna create a weapon, and in that moment you will need money, so you'll you, you will have to to know how much the weapon costs, so we can. Uh, we can uh, yeah uh, subtract the money from the from the player and now that I think about it we actually need to specify the the cost of the weapon in here and the currency which will be a link okay Yeah, so we're gonna start with the weapon definition asset. We're gonna do the weapon slot manager. Uh, what the weapon slot manager does, um, let's see if we can find it in here. I don't know if I wrote anything here for it. No, I did not. Actually, I kind of did. So, so whenever you you have a weapon slot and you click on it and you create a weapon, that weapon slot is gonna disappear because you have a weapon already there. And what weapon slot manager is going to do, he's going to keep track of all the weapon slots that have been used. So whenever you, so you're going to save the game and whenever you load the game, uh, he will be able to, or, or yeah, he will have to make sure that uh, uh, the weapon slot that have been uh, used already are not going to show up on the screen. So it's gonna, as as I as I wrote right here, it's gonna hold the list of weapons slot uh, GUIDs that have been used. So we so we know that we don't have to show them on screen anymore because there's a weapon already there. Yeah. Really more like not the no, another weapon slot manager has a dependency on definition asset, but the, but the weapon slot itself needs a. So seventy eight. Like so. Okay, so we're gonna do those later, and for now we're gonna focus on on the weapon slots and whatever this uh, needs. So let's start with the with the weapon definition asset. And make our way to to the end goal. Okay, so let's make it here. 
weapon definition. That looks fine. Weapons time. This is gonna be a scriptable object. Um, weapon definition. And let's see what oh, what did I say that I wanted to to put on this. So first we'll need the name, and the name is gonna be localized. Local. Uh, I can't write. Localized string. We will have a boolean. Uh, public bool. Actually, those are not going to be public. It's going to be private. Uh, serialized field. Uh, private bool as infinite levels. Private int cost. And actually, it should be like this. Private link currency. And let's declare public class. Actually, kind of can copy this. We will move this. We'll move this here, and where it has custom name. Uh, actually, we also need this. Custom name. Show if. And also indent it. Let's put a space here. The cost and the currency. And here we will have a list of private or an array of level definitions, levels, serialized field. Okay, let's see how this looks. Weapons. Let's make a definition for the dummy weapon. Weapons. Oh, God damn it. Weapons, weapon definition. That weapon definition. Uh, hide the script. Okay, we'll have a name. We don't care about the name right now. We're going to have a cost. Let's then coins. We'll have levels for it. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, so when the name is enabled, this uh, shows up.
yeah, I think this is kind of it. I mean, we we should make it look a little bit prettier, but uh, um, let's put some space here. Let's put some space here. This drawer settings. Show paging false. Expanded true. Uh, Druggable items. Yeah, yeah, that that that's okay. Show item called true. Awesome. Okay, so we have the weapon definition. Um, I mean, it looks good, but we, we have to expose all those things for the outside world. So let's start by doing that. Public. Um, in value one, in value one, Um, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so basically for levels I don't have, I'm going to use the same name here, actually. Is infinite. But actually, actually for this it does make sense to be like, like it was before, has infinite levels. Okay. For levels, I would have to do something similar to this, but here you have the multiplayer. I mean, multiplayer is all we care about. But for the weapon, weapon level definition. Get level definition, int level. Um, 
Yeah, for now we're just gonna do we're gonna do it like this. Uh and level minus one actually. Or no. No, we can do it uh we can do it like this. Okay. Yeah, that should do it. We've exposed everything that we need. That should do it. What's this song? Fire. Nice. Okay, so this is, this is, I wonder if I should put the currency on the same line as the cost. Let's see how that looks. Um, so we would a horizontal group. And also hide label for this. That doesn't work because I don't have a space there. But I can change it by putting a property space here with zero and eight. That should fix it. Awesome. So then, whatever the currency is. I like that. I actually like that. So let's do it the same for this. Um, let's put a space here. Actually, no, for this, does it doesn't. I have to put the space for both. And actually, no, I don't like that space when uh, has custom name is not is not checked. Yeah, better.
So if it is checked, we're going to have a space there to separate it from whatever whatever is below. But if not, they can be next to each other. No problem. Awesome. This looks better. And yeah, for upgrade here, I should do the same for. Um, I should um, add currency to this as well and use it. Let me make a task for this. So I want add currency to upgrade the finished asset. I'm going to put it in the backlog. Okay. Cool. Cool. So I guess this task is done. Um, eighteen minutes. Publish. Come on. Cool. One task done. Now we have to do the web slot manager. Okay. This is going to be very easy to do. Actually, let's make a folder for this because we're going to have more things related to the one slot. One slots, I guess. One slot manager. Um, yeah, it's going to be a service. I own a scene loaded. Set. And this is going to be similar to some other things that we've done. No, first let's do... That runtime folder here. Let's put it there. Create as new. Um, project tower. Weapons. Weapons slot manager. Okay, and also hide monoscript. Okay, now let's see where we get some uh, code from. Um, Economy manager, there we go. Economy manager. What do we need from here? We'll need something like this.
uh, we will need something similar to this, but not for the economy. Weapon slot manager data. Entity data. For now, we're going to keep it as so. And we have to look here. Actually, this is all, all we need. So let's copy this, put it in here. Public list of entity ID. No, it's no longer entity ID. What did I call it? Oh, just ID. This one. A list of IDs. Uh, used um, used weapon slots. Public struct serialized this. We have to make another folder this or another file at IO. This has to be partial. We're going to implement everything. This weapon slot is serialized data dot this. And in here, I'm going to do it like so. Let's see how this works. Uh, first, we have to make that data entity. So, weapon slot manager. Manager data. We're gonna add an entity root and we're gonna add the slot thing like so. Uh, we're gonna make it read only. And actually, that's everything. Make it a prefab. Let's create the manager. Weapons, weapon slot manager. Set it here. Okay, explicit methods. Yep. Yeah, I should totally do that. So instead of this, I have to do it like so. And there it is. Weapon slot manager, it's in the list. Nice. Can remove this. And now let's save the scene. And now when we play the scene, we should get that in here. Weapon slot manager data. There we go. And yeah, that's totally right. We would 
we want to save this data, so we have to add uh, component. We have to add the imported component into the importer. Otherwise, the the data this won't be saved. That um, won't be in the save file. Okay. Okay, and now uh, all that we need, or or all that that's left to do here is add some methods to this. For actually, no, first um, service. Let's put this in a region so we can get rid of it, like so. Public void. Add weapon slot as or uh, save weapon slot as used and ID ID So those methods we will use from the from the weapon slot to know if the yeah if used and after we we use it we have to save it as as so so we know that we should not show it again and I guess that's it for this uh, for the manager so I guess this task is done. There's one other thing that I have to do uh, about that. Uh, let's actually write a message here so I don't have to copy it again. But uh, yeah, we have to do one more thing and it's an important one. Uh, come on. We have to create this assembly ref here. Awesome. Now, now it's done. Now it is done. Okay, so now we can start working on the actual weapon slot. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's see. So that's the manager, and we're gonna create the the actual weapons component. The component. Let's 
make the data component for it. Um, I don't think we're going to save anything on the slot itself. But no, actually, that I think about it, I don't think this should be an entity. I don't. Uh, I mean, that's the reason why I made the the manager. Um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just make this so so no web, uh, no no data component. This is actually gonna be just a simple um, mono behavior. Now that I think about it. Ah, but actually, hmm. oh no, it works. I have to hook onto the, yeah. Yeah, okay. I need the reference to the lifecycle service and on start. Add listener um, on the initialized state. Like so. And let's see, what do we need? We're going to also need a reference to the weapon dot manager. And we'll uh, an ID for this. So private ID ID. If weapon slot manage dot is weapon used ID. Also. Play a string. Game object dot uh, set active false. This is how it looks. Let's make a uh, let's make a weapon slot. Let's hide the monoscript.
awesome let's assign everything Okay. Yeah. So we have the weapon slot. Uh, let's make something to it so so we can see it. Um, what should we add? A root indicator. That should do it. Okay. Um. Okay, let's play the game. So right now the weapon the weapon is active because it's not in the in this list. I would like to be able to add it and for now for testing. Uh, let's add No, let's let's just make it um hmm. Let me think about this. Uh, how do I want to do it? Okay. Um, okay, we'll do a couple of things. First, we need to add something to the weapon definition that we've got. Uh, we will have to add the, the prefab. Public. Uh, I don't know the no, I don't know the type that I want to write here. Um, but I know find it. We will have to go to tar modules. Uh, wait, should it be here? Wait, I'm confused. Tar module data. Yeah, this this is the one. Yeah, asset reference, that's what I want. Public, no, private. The reference. Prefab. I still use this. Yes, I do. Aha, uh -huh. so that's what that's how I do it. I see. Okay, so I'm doing I'm gonna do it uh, 
in the same way. We fab a reference. Let's import this. Public. Okay. This. Okay, uh, let's go to our dummy weapon and set it up. So here we'll have to make the dummy weapon. Yeah, have to add it here. So we have the reference. And now, just for, for testing, I'm gonna add a reference to that, to a weapon definition. Uh, I'm also gonna put this as public, so I don't I know to, to remove it. So weapon definition, weapon, Remove me. Right void. Um, spawn weapon. Spawn weapon. Load asset async. Uh, it's gonna be a game object. And actually, what what am I doing here? Um, oh, I'm waiting for it. Okay, that sounds fair. So if weapon dot uh, prefab that. Wait, what? Not result, man. It's completed. Let's make that uh, um, right void spawn. And whatever, we're going to do something there. Spawn else. Get a waiter. Uncompleted spawn, and actually, I can do this. And that's not a bad idea, actually. Okay. Same thing here. Instantiate. Um, instantiate prefab. Um, Transform position and transform that rotation. The parent is going to be null. Sure, cache this. And
actually that that function that I made on the entity root actually might come in nice right now. So this one. Um region run. Now I can say var uh, go get uh, get component entity root and actually I don't even need that and I can say load entity. Okay. Let's see if everything that I've done works. Let's assign this dummy weapon and yeah, we have spawn weapon in here. Let's save this. Let's play. And let's see what it is. Um, weapon slot, spawn weapon. Nice. We have a weapon. We have a weapon. Nice. Now all we have to do is use this uh, weapon slot. So let's start by making uh, making it a prefab and adding it to a module and let's go actually to the straight module and instead of having this dummy weapon in here we're gonna add the weapon and let's add the tower aligned component so this is the root and this is the global data Yeah, sure, that looks fine. Save. And now when I play, let's see if we get a, uh, yeah, of course we don't get a, oh no. No, this is a straight face. Yeah, that's good. So let's get into the straight piece with the weapon slot and now we can spawn the weapon. And now actually we haven't done that, but we have to do it. Um, whenever we spawn the weapon, but I'm not sure if in this function I should do it. No, no, it makes sense to be here. So uh, not D. Because we don't have data. Um, weapon slot manager, save weapon slot is used, ID. Let's try it again. And maybe let's get the slot manager in here. Let's get the properties for this. Play. Uh, any straight pieces? Of course not. Let's try it again. There we go. Weapon slot. Spawn weapon. We have the weapon and we have the GUID in here. Nice. Nice.
So now what? Um, now if we save the game, I haven't disabled this. Yeah, when I said that to that that weapon slot to use, I should also disable this weapon slot. Uh, but uh, let's get back to this. Um, so let's see. Yeah, game manager. I'm gonna save the game. And now, uh, if I play the game again, an item with the same key has already been added. Empty. Ooh. Oh, I think I know why. It's because, um, oh no. Here, player prefs. Uh, any straight pieces? No. No. There we go. I think create the weapon. It has an empty GUID. I have to, to create a GUID for this. Also, the, the weapon shouldn't have that uh, component anymore because it doesn't need it. Awesome. Yeah, so when I create this, I should also generate the I should generate the ID for it. Which I don't think I can do currently. I mean I don't have a, a method for doing it. Okay, let's see if it works now. So we play the game. We let's get this weapon slot. We spawn the weapon. The weapon slot is disabled. Uh, it gets added to the to the used weapon slot. Our dummy, wep dummy weapon has an ID, so it's going to be saved correctly in the save file. Let's do that. Let's save. We saved the uh, we saved the game, and now let's try to play it again. It didn't work, huh? I think I know why. I think I know why. 
but let me check something. So if I go to entity root, um, no, not here. Oh, interesting. No, um, I had a method of generating a new GUID. But that's not what I'm looking for. Um, where would I find that? Oh, where is this one used because that's what I want to it is not used I don't get it oh no that's correct that's not used this would be used yeah here Yeah, this is a byte array. In the where's my weapon slot manager data? Instead of having an, a list of IDs, I'm gonna have a list of byte array. Ah. Uh, Ah, oh my bad, no, not here. Uh, this I have to do uh, here. Here, I have to do a new ID of ID. I wanna create a new ID from that byte array. Let's try it now. I don't think this is going to work either, but we'll see. That is the problem. <laughs> I think that was the problem. But anyway, that would uh, that would have been a problem as well. If it was not saved as a uh, array. Okay, let's try it again. Um, actually, no, uh, we have to clear prefs first and then restart this. Nice, we got a straight piece. Let's spawn the weapon. We have the day. Now let's save this. Um, where is my game editor? And now we exit play mode and then we enter and we still have a problem. Very cannot be null. But now this is different. Now this is different. Let's go here and see what happens. Uh, oh, this is null. Uh, 
Oh, this is interesting. Why would it be null? Not here, but here. I think I'm gonna look at the at what um, what we have in the okay. So we saved. Let's see what this does. Looks as expected. It's a list of byte arrays. Try to copy this text and see if we can look into it. Have I missed something? So there is something with an ID here, so that's a potential problem. Oh, economy manager. We don't care about that right now. We're looking for this. No serialized data. I, uh, uh, what? Is this not put system serializable in it? So why am I not seeing anything? What? Huh. This is interesting. Other things it looks fine. For example, for the upgrades manager data. Let's see if there's something different on uh, with this. System serializable as well. Uh, not this one. This one. Yeah. System serializable also has a list. It's a struct. Why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it work? So it should totally work. Okay. We're gonna try to save again. And see where uh, see where the data goes to. Um, out of here. Um, can I step into? No, can't. Get out. Get out. Step into this one. Serialized entity. Let's see what we what we have here. Okay, so we don't have anything here. 
Good, so this is too late for this. Let's skip this. Let's save again. Let's get out of here. Let's get to this. So this has the data. But I don't get anything out of this for some reason. But why is this? Huh. Am I not getting anything? It is public. Doesn't make any sense. Hmm. This actually makes no sense why it wouldn't work. Let's try to make this an array, but it shouldn't make a difference. List to array. Um, no. Uh. Any straight pieces? No. Oh, come on, give me a straight piece. Oh, stupid. There we go. One weapon. We have the weapon. Let's save the game. Over here. I still don't get anything. Why? Why is this? Because there's definitely data in this. There is definitely data in this. Why, why wouldn't it work? Why would it not save this? Or, I mean, serialize it. Doesn't make any sense. Why it wouldn't want to serialize this?
What? Why? Okay, it's time for... Uh... I do have a system here. Destruct. Why would fields? Static fields would not be the right attribute applied. It's public and it's an array of bytes. But whatever. Wait, what? This doesn't make any sense because Is an interray. So this it can it can serialize this no problem. But my byte array he doesn't want to do it. For some reason. Let's try something. Okay, let's close everything. Let's get back to this. Let's make it like so. Yeah, you're gonna shout because you don't know what to do. That's not a problem. Um. Let's comment this. OK. 
okay. Let's see if it works now. On. Save. Get out of here. Get inside of this. Still doesn't want to do it. Yeah, I think the problem is because it's an array of an array of an int. I think that's what what's bothering him. I think that's what the problem is. Cause I'm pretty. I mean, no, I know this works because I because I'm already using it. But man, that. Stupid. Let's try this. So let's make a public struct serialized ID public byte array ID. Here we'll have an array of serialized ID, and here we're gonna have new serialized ID. ID equals ID. I think this will work. Let's try it. Hey, come on, give me a straight piece. Ah, I have to uh, delete the save file. Awesome, no straight pieces. There we go. Spawn weapon. Now let's save the game. We are here. Let's get out of here. Let's get inside serialized. Doesn't want to do it. What? Uh, yeah, because I'm stupid and I forgot to say that this truck is realizable. Out, in, refresh. There we go. Yeah, so that's the problem. It can't serialize that array of array bytes. It needs a class in there. That's so stupid. That's so stupid. Okay. Now let's try the experiment. Um, oh, in here, did it work?
Okay. Why didn't it work? Actually, never mind. Uh, let um, click this. Let's try. It. Wow, now that's that's a, that's a tower we can test. spawn weapon. Save the exit. Play. Hell yeah! So this is disabled because we have this ID in the list. Nice! Nice! Cool! So now we can... Yeah, now we know what the, what the weapon slots from, from the tower um if they're used or not now the only thing left to do is and it's not that easy to do so right now we we have the weapon slot because it comes with the with a module with a module and we disable it because we know we, we we've used it already but uh we have not serialized the or or we've serialized the weapon, but we don't know what, uh, or we don't know how to spawn it at runtime. Because it, right now uh, we only load data into the entities that we know. Of. But because the weapon is an entity that we spawn at runtime, when we load the scene, the, that entity is no longer there, so we don't know how to use the how to use the data. And that is something that we'll have to do in another task. Um, so after we load the data for um, the entities that we know of, uh, we're gonna start uh, spawning uh, entities that we that are not currently present in the scene, and after that, load the data into them. Um, but for now. I consider this a win because we have the. I mean, we 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 do and we don't have the weapon slot. So right now, yeah, there, there are a couple of things that we have to do, uh, or we, we, that are left to do on on the weapon slot. So one of them is um, yeah, we have to make it actually work in the game as in you have to click on something on the screen and the weapon should appear there um we have to make a um, i don't know somewhere a place where we can specify the the, the weapon that we want to build so there might be buttons on the screen where we choose what weapon we want to use or we, we want to uh read. we click on that and then when you click on a weapon slot, you're gonna create that that specific weapon. And actually, that's kind of it. That's what the weapon slot needs to do. So right now, it it, it kind of has the functionality, but uh, we've we have a reference to the weapon definition in here, which we will have to get from somewhere. And right now there is a, a button in the context menu which we can press to spawn the to spawn the weapon instead of uh, instead of it being on uh, yeah in the in the game. But for now, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here with this. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna create tasks for uh, this, uh, those, uh, for this functionality, so I can uh, work them next week, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, 
yeah i think i'm gonna stop the stream here i'm really i i don't know i'm i ha i have to take a break and uh i don't know if i uh, if i would uh, come back to work on this uh, afterwards but uh yeah yeah so i i think i think i'm gonna stop the stream the stream here um yeah next week we're gonna continue with this so we're gonna continue working on the weapon slot to make it uh, in the game um after that um uh, uh, we have what, what what I've talked about, which is uh, which are those, those tasks, um, the um, creation of the of the tower, oh, not the tower, but the the weapon at runtime. So when you load the when you load the game, the weapons are gonna appear. Um, those are the those two tasks. Um, we'll have to to create some new components for uh, uh, loading and saving the game, which sounds like a lot, but it's it, it, it's not really that that complicated because we have uh, we have some basic components, but we have to add to them. And then we're gonna work on the other attacks once we have um, this one weapon uh, working correctly from start to finish. So you have the weapon slot, create the weapon. Uh, you will need currency to to build the weapon and stuff like that. And yeah, the the weapon already works. So if it's in the scene, uh, it it will already attacks the enemy. So so that part is done. But we have to make this uh, this part where where you 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 can create the weapon from from the game. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop uh, right here, and uh, we're gonna continue next Saturday with this. And uh, yeah. See you, see you next stream. Bye bye.